right, so today is Saturday, January 4th, 2020, and I'm standing here at the Jack Layton Ferry Terminal in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So I'm not gonna be riding on this bike today, but as you can see on the front of my bike, I have an action camera mounted, and in this video I'm gonna be riding north and giving a narrated tour of Bay Street in Toronto. All right, so as this traffic light turns green, I'm now crossing Queen's Quay and beginning my way north along Bay Street. First point of interest I'll point out over on the left, you can see kind of in the distance there's a building that has a green roof. That's the Fairmont Royal York Hotel, which is a very fancy and old hotel. I'm sure when it was built it was one of the tallest things around, but it's now hidden most of the time behind other tall buildings that have come since it. The next point of interest is on the left also, uh, this building which is just underneath this bridge that we're about to go under, just beyond there, that concrete building that has scaffolding around it, that is what's called Scotiabank Arena, although for most of my life it was known as the Air Canada Centre. It's a uh, arena where uh, a couple of Toronto sports teams play, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs play hockey there and the Toronto Raptors play basketball there. And this road that I'm about to cross here is Lakeshore Boulevard. And the reason there's a bridge over top of it is because that's the, the Gardner Expressway Highway, which uh, is an elevated expressway through the, the heart of the city. And uh, earlier this year, actually, we're in a new year now, but uh, last, last year, last, uh, in 2019, uh, in June, the very beginning of June, I uh, made a video where I rode on that highway on the one day of the year where bikes are allowed to go on it. That's for the Ride for Heart uh, event. So the bridge that I'm crossing under now is for the rail, the rail system or the trains. It's basically uh, Union Station, which is Toronto's main rail station. That's just to my, to my left now and uh, all of those, all the trains that come and go from there, there's you know several lines of train tracks. There's about, I think about 28 different tracks, maybe, maybe only half that number. I just know that because they, they label the stairs for getting to the different platforms by numbers, but I think they, they number them twice because you have either side of the tracks, but so let's say about 15 different train tracks that are all, side by side. So that's what that big <laughs> bridge we had to go under there was. All right, so we're now beyond uh, Front Street. That was that last intersection there. And we're heading towards Wellington Street. I have to say I was very lucky with all those traffic lights there because usually coming through there, you're, you're guaranteed to hit at least one of them, but I ended up making it this far without having to stop. So this area of the city, this is, you know, this is the heart of downtown, really. Uh, Bay Street is actually known as the, the financial street. Um, when you talk about the Toronto Stock Exchange, the TSX, um, in, the, in the way that they call the, the New York Stock Exchange, they sometimes refer to that as Wall Street because that's physically where it is. They do the same thing when they're referring to um, Toronto, they call it Bay Street because it's, it used to be based here. Actually, uh, that building that's on our left up ahead, that black building, you can see it has sort of a section which is limestone. And that's the original facade of the original Toronto Stock Exchange. You can actually read the letters in the limestone. They've built a much modern, built more, more, much more modern building around it, but left the, the old facade behind. So this next intersection right here, this is, you know, what would be considered the central area of the of the banks and the, and the money in Canada um, on, it's a, you know, it's an intersection that has four, four corners, you know, four different sides and four of the five banks, you know, the five major banks in Canada have towers there and the fifth of those five have their tower, you know, about a block away or something like that. So it is really the financial capital of, of Canada. 
Now we're approaching Adelaide Street, which is a one-way street which heads in the east direction. The next street after that is Richmond, which goes in the opposite direction. So they have these two one-ways. Uh, Wellington, which you crossed behind us, that was also a, a one-way street, but for the most part our, our arterials in, in downtown Toronto, or most of Toronto, is all uh, two-way streets. We don't have too many one-ways. So straight ahead you can see a, a clock tower. And uh, that's the clock tower of the old City Hall building. And it was built, uh, it was finished construction in 1899, so right before the turn of the, the 19th century, or the beginning of the 1900s. And the reason we call it Old City Hall is because there is a newer city hall that was built in the 1960s, which replaced it, which is called New City Hall, even though it's not really new anymore. But it's the newer of the two. Uh, the Old City Hall is no longer used as a city hall building, but it, um, it's actually leased to the Ontario government who use it for, for courts. There are Ontario courts in there. This is Richmond Street, the one way which goes in the west direction. I should mention both Richmond and Adelaide have bi a bike lane on them. And uh, I've made, uh, when those first got installed, they made a video uh, which showed that, although since then they've now expanded that bike lane, so I really ought to get back down here again and film an update video to show what it's like to ride on all of it, because it's basically like twice as long as it was at the time when I filmed that initial video. So we're now at Queen Street, right below where uh, that old City Hall building is, and we'll be turning, jogging slightly to the left to continue, and on our left you'll be able to see, well you can now see a little bit of it, but that's the, the new City Hall building. And uh, in front of the new City Hall building there's a big open concrete area that they call Nathan Phillips Square. It has a fountain which in the winter is turned into a big skating rink. Uh, it also has a big sign that says Toronto with lit up letters, colorful letters. Many of those things will probably be out of frame but I think you can see a little bit of the Toronto sign there straight ahead. And then there you can see the big towers for the, the new City Hall building. And in the middle there's a little domed roof area and that's where the council chamber is where they have their council meetings. So the reason that uh, Bay Street curves like that is because Bay Street, at least north of Queen Street, was not part of the original sort of grid that was used to divide this part of the, this part of the land when it was first occupied. Um, so basically it's been a, an amalgamation of a number of different streets which are connected together into a straight line. So where I'm riding now actually used to be called, I believe, Trolley Street, which was named after a, an estate which used to be here. Another fun fact about the name of the names of the previous names of Bay Street was that before it was called Bay Street, it actually was called, I apparently it was originally called Bear Street, and that was because when Toronto was first developed, there were frequent bear sightings in the city, which to me is kind of funny because you probably have to go about 100 kilometers at this point away from the city if you wanted to see a bear in its natural environment. So we're now at Dundas Street, and over on our right, uh, that's the Canadian Tire uh, store, uh, which is part, it's connected to, I believe it's part of the Eaton Centre, which is a big, it's, it's the big uh, downtown Toronto uh, shopping mall. Just beyond Dundas Street, over on the left you can see a, a building which has, uh, it's a two-story building, the second building on the left, that is the, uh, the Toronto bus terminal. So if you wanted to take a Greyhound bus from here to somewhere outside of Toronto, that's the main place that the buses arrive and depart from. Just before the bus terminal, one of the businesses on that street there was a little restaurant or a little business called Uncle Tetsu's. And that's a, a Japanese business 
which started in the 1990s, but has started to, to, to grow around the world. And actually, um, Toronto was their first uh, location, which is outside of Asia. And when that place first opened, uh, you would go there any time of day and you'd see lineups of people outside of it. You know, they put like a, a cloth, um, you know, aisle thing out on the sidewalk so that people could line up outside and not block the sidewalk. Uh, because it was very popular. They make this special kind of Japanese cheesecake. And uh, it was very much in high demand when they first opened. They've now since opened other locations around the GTA and around Canada. Alright, so we're just about to cross Girard Street here. And as we head further north along Bay, the street becomes more and more dominated by condominiums. This part of Bay, nicely though, it does have a, a bike lane in it. So the bike that I'm riding today is my 1992 Iowa Linear Bike which is a, a bike which has been featured in a lot of my recent videos where I've been doing various upgrades to it. But now with all those complete, it's really nice to be able to take this bike out on the road again. The method that I'm using for mounting my camera onto this bike is using a 3D printed bracket that I actually built for my other linear recumbent bike. But since the two bikes have the same cross section of tubing, I'm able to use that bracket on both. So it's really nice to have that universal mount. So the street up ahead that we're approaching is College Street and I made a video back in December where I rode along College Street and it ended about a block to the east of where I am right now. So it looks like the bike lane ends after college so we've got these little Shero things which don't really do very much, especially when there's a police car parked in the curb lane like that. So these buildings that you see over on the left, those big concrete office towers, those are owned by the Ontario government. That's where many of the, the, the Ontario ministries are. Uh, remember Toronto is the capital city of the province of Ontario, so there's lots of bureaucrats that have offices here in, in the city. So. A lot of that is occupied in those, those office towers there. The next point of interest is that building which has stone near the bottom and glass near the top. That used to be a hotel called Sutton Place Hotel. And it was a very pre prestigious expensive fancy hotel that lots of celebrities stayed at back around the time that it was first built in the 1960s but it didn't do so well as as it aged and uh, eventually it's now been converted into a condo and when they built the condo they pretty much gutted the entire building it doesn't even look the same anymore including the whole outside facade I think they just pretty much tore it down right down to the, the the concrete superstructure and just rebuilt it from there. I remember when they were doing that work. Very unusual to see a building that's you know that tall being gutted like that. There's a church over on our left. We kind of just went past that's St. Basil's Catholic Church. Yeah, most of these buildings around here though are condominiums that were built within the last 10 to 15 years. The street here is called Charles Street that we're about to cross. Just a quiet neighborhood street.
So I'm going to be riding all the way to Davenport, which is the the point where Bay Street terminates. But this next intersection I've got to cross is Bluer Street, Bluer Street West. I've got to get around and these two cars are turning right. I'm going straight. This part of Bluer Street is known as Yorkville. And actually this stretch right along here is part of what's often referred to as the Mink Mile, which is where a lot of very expensive, fancy retail stores are located. It's, I believe it has the, the highest dollar per square foot retail costs of anywhere in Canada. So lately I've been trying to film more of these narrated cycling videos. I've been trying to show as many parts of my city that I haven't shown before. If there's an area of Toronto that you'd like to see me ride through, I'd uh, love to hear your suggestions in the comment section below. This is called Cumberland Street. And uh, so Yorkville, as I said, that's kind of where we were crossing on Bluer, but uh, north of Bluer, there's a couple of streets that go east-west including Cumberland and Yorkville Avenue, which I'm just about to cross, which is sort of the old community of, of Yorkville. Uh, if we were to turn left, that would take us into Yorkville. So this portion of Bloor used to be known as Ketchum Avenue, but just like Tirali, it eventually was renamed to maintain a consistent naming convention all the way along Bay Street. All right, so this traffic light up ahead is for Davenport Road, which is the point where Bay Street ends. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this narrated cycling tour. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.